Hello, welcome to One on One. I'm your host, Greg Walker. Our guest on this edition is Austin P. State University head men's basketball coach, Dave Luce. Coach Luce is embarking on his 27th season at the helm. As we tape this show, November the 2nd, on a Wednesday, last night the Governors opened up exhibition play with a big win over Thomas Moore. They'll be playing Swanee in an exhibition game as well prior to starting the season. On today's show, we're going to talk with the coach about this 2016 and 17 Governor edition. We'll look at the OVC. We'll look at the cast that will make up this year's team and much more. Settle back, relax, and enjoy a good down-to-earth conversation with a good man. Head coach Dave Luce joins us. We'll visit with the coach right after these words. The model year-end sales event continues at Matthews Nissan, Clarksville's favorite new car dealer. Save big on 400 new. We're making room for 2017s. 8,188 off a new Altima. 6,388 off a new Rogue. 7,888 off a new Maxima. Buy a new Versa. 9,999. You're gonna love our prices. I'm Gary Matthews, and that's my guarantee. You're gonna love our prices, Matthews. The Leaf Chronicle is now available on every device you carry or don't carry. All things Clarksville in all media 24 7. Subscribe now for full access. For a hundred years, Neil Tarpley Parchment Funeral Home has honored legacies. We believe every family deserves a special time of celebrating a life well lived. Neil Tarpley Parchment, people who care, a name you can trust. Welcome to our show today. Governor Head Men's Basketball Coach Dave Luce is in the house. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Coach. Good to have you. Thank you. Good to be here. Tell everybody, first of all, everybody uh, asks me a lot, uh, how's everything coming? You've had some health problems. You're mm -hmm. taking treatments. How you feel? Well, I'm about uh, a little over halfway through the treatments, and, and I've been lucky. Uh, my side effects have not been uh, the, of the real serious sort. Food tastes a little different. I have a little trouble sleeping now and then, but other than that, things have gone well. Well, you've kept what hair that uh, you have left. Have you? Well, they told me that I was doing a good job of my own, uh, <laughs> or on my own, losing my hair. So that's what I went with. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're doing good. You, you got good color. You look like you feel good. I do. I do. Are you excited about this season? I am. A different sort of team, as you know. Yeah. Uh, makeup and the strengths Very. of our team a little different, but I'm excited to get started. Of course, they played Thomas Moore last night. Uh, they won that ball game, one twelve to sixty three. Uh, what did you see in that ball game, Coach? Uh, that certainly the team is going to have to improve on. Well, our, our post defense, with, without a doubt, and I think our defense overall is, is not where we need to be. I agree uh, with you totally. Yeah, but we, we we let it come into the post too easy. Uh, they scored uh, over and around us uh, too easily in the post. So we'll go back to work on that this afternoon. Are you going to have to play a lot of one in, four out this year, Coach? Uh, we haven't changed offensively. We're, we play a, a high-low motion that goes into a, a ball screen motion. So we haven't changed that because we think we can create some some mismatches on the perimeter with uh, Dracalo, uh, Clayton, and uh, even Chris Porter Bunton can take you outside. And We're a little undersized to begin with, so we haven't changed that. Uh, we do have to do something about uh, the other end, though. Coach, uh, off season is no such thing anymore in, in sports. But over the summer, what player came in that's made the most dramatic improvement in your opinion? Yeah. I think Chris Stocks is a guy that can help our ball club. He's we've had trouble keeping him on the practice floor. He's 
he uh, he missed the first two weeks of practice with an ankle injury and then kind of hyperextended a thumb at one point, missed, missed a little more practice. But he's a guy that's a solid player that knows how to play. Uh, I, I have high hopes for him. Now we talked a little bit about the team weaknesses, post-defense, defense in general. What are your strengths this year? I think we shoot the ball well. Uh, you know, that's always a dangerous proposition because even the best guys – uh, are going to have nights where it yeah. seems like there's a lid on the basket. But I think we score it well from the perimeter. Um, you know, we, we need to maintain an inside presence, though, because, as you know, the average game you're going to get 23 to 25 field goals, and the rest comes from the free throw, uh, the charity stripe. So we've got to maintain some kind of inside presence to get to that free throw line. Coach, the OVC as a whole, of course, saw the preseason predictions, media, the SIDs, uh, the coaches. Uh, they vary a little bit, but uh, in the West, where uh, the Govs reside, Murray, the still the team to beat, it looks mm-hmm. like. And, uh, of course, the media had you pick second in the West. Uh, the coaches and SIDs third. How do you see it stacking up? I was, I was comfortable with uh, where we were picked. You know, I, 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 we've got a little bit of a target on our back uh, to begin with because of the run at the end of last season. Right. I've tried to make our players aware of that. But, <clears throat> you know, I, I thought we were picked um, at, at a pretty good spot. Pretty good spot. Mm-hmm. Belmont on the other side looks like they're once again, uh, and of course they've got Evan Brads. Is that guy an amazing player, coach, considering if you looked at him on the street or walking in the gym, you're not going to say, that's my guy. That's right. But he is. Well, I think he's <clears throat> arguably uh, the most efficient player maybe that I've seen in the OVC in my time there, and it's been a long time. Uh, You know, he shoots 71, 72 percent from the field. He he knows how to get an angle in there. He scores simple. Uh, He's really tough to deal with. Boy, you nailed it, the most efficient, and that's what he is. He's efficient. Absolutely. He sure is. Great comment. Dave Luce is uh, our guest today. When we come back on segment two, we're going to be a little long, so we're going to be a little short on segment one. Want to look at the roster making up this 2016-17 Gov edition? Have the Govs uh, have the coach go over them? We'll do that when we return. Right after these words. Chronicle is now available on every device you carry or don't carry. All things Clarksville in all media 24 7. Subscribe now for full access. Austin P. Head basketball coach for the men, Dave Luce, 27th season. 27. Woo! Going by in a hurry, too. Well, we've been around a while. Haven't Going we? faster, th- <laughs> faster than you can imagine. Isn't that amazing? The older you get, how much it faster is. It time is. It's goes. It's very noticeable. I agree. Let's go right down the roster, and I'll just go numerically here, and you comment on the players. Okay. And, um, we'll go from there. A same job. He's a six-eight senior from Dakar, Senegal, and really. We need some productivity out of him. We do. Uh, Asan has rebounded the ball well in our early practices. Uh, has had a little trouble catching it in there, um, but but a guy that we you know we we uh, is valuable to our team because we need to replace Chris Horton's rebounds, and he's done the best job of chasing the ball on the board. Beautiful player, Jared Savage. He's a six-five sophomore from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Yeah, I, I like to refer to him as silky smooth. He it's is. He's beautiful to watch. That, uh, 
he is fun to watch and uh, he, he doesn't look like he's as, as quick as he actually is because he's smooth and uh, you know his, uh, his shooting has been a little bit off here lately but uh, I have no doubt that uh, you know that he'll find his stroke and he can really shoot it when he gets on a roll you know I think the evidence is uh, last year's conference tournament where we inserted him into the starting lineup and made 19 threes in four games. Oh, he, he was amazing. He was amazing. He helped win that tournament Absolutely. without question. Chris Porter Bunton. Now, Chris is a 6'5", 217-pound uh, redshirt sophomore, also from Bowling Green. Mm -hmm. He's a, a guy you can use uh, a couple of ways, isn't he, Coach? He is. That's what I like about Chris. He's, uh, you know, he's a little undersized play uh, inside, but he chases the ball pretty good on the board. Uh, the big thing is he can create a mismatch for us if he can take a big away from the basket and you have to guard him because he can make a three. That's going to be a valuable asset to our team. Josh Robinson, a 6'2", 185 junior from St. Louis, Missouri. He doesn't look like he's lost his touch and he's definitely not bashful. No, he's uh, he's never met a bad shot. Nope. That's for sure. And and Josh is uh, Josh is a preseason All Conference guy. Should be. I think he he has his sights set pretty high, and he's capable of achieving some pretty nice things for our basketball team. He's a good player. He really is. I like him at point, coach. Yeah, I, I do too. Uh, you know, he's he's a different sort of point. He guard. is. He's, he's very that's, different. That's hunting shots, which is fine with me because he can make them. Yep. He is that. Trey Ivory, a 5'11", 185 junior from Louisville, Kentucky. Trey has a great feel for how to play. He, he understands the game, um, you know, keeps us in our stuff. He's a solid guy to have coming off the bench and uh, can, can uh, be real meaningful to our team, I think. Yeah, he can do some things that others can't at times. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, you know, when he really gets after it, he's first of all one of our better defenders. Uh, against the, the opponent's point guard, so sometimes we could move Josh to guard the two and, and uh, put Trey on the point, so he's a valuable guy to have on your team. Domas Boudreaux, a 6'4 junior from Lithuania. Coach, he, does, uh, he doesn't look like he changed a bit physically. No, he's, he's a guy that uh, likes to, you know, to migrate toward that corner and look for a jump shot. Yep. And, uh, you know, he, he uh, gets on a roll. He can make some. He's, he's, uh, I'd, I'd like to see Domas uh, shoot the ball a little earlier in his, in his scheme. He shoots it on the way down, and I think that, that hurts his productivity. But uh, he, he can make a shot from three. Well, you nailed him. Sam McCracken, one of the newcomers, 6'8 freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, Sam, Sam is from Moeller. Uh, is, put out some unbelievable athletes up there in Cincinnati in a number of sports. Uh, has a good skill set. You know, he can shoot the basketball a little bit. He's got to get a little more physical uh, and probably a lot more physical in the post uh, to, to play in this league. You know, this next guy is sort of an enigma to me. Steve Harris, six four sophomore from St. Louis. Coach, it seemed like every time you put Harris in last year, he was productive. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he does things that most people don't notice. Yeah, Steve really gets to the basket. You know, he's not uh, he's not a guy that's going to wear you out on the perimeter, but he yep. has the athletic ability to get to the rim and finish. He's got a good left hand. Uh, he he can he can really finish around the basket, and I and I would like to think that he could become a good defender. He's long armed and rangy, athletic. Uh, so he's a guy that we have hopes that. Uh, can really help us de defensively. I think he can. Jartavius Dobbs, another newcomer, 6'10", freshman from Columbus, Mississippi. Jartavius uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of Chris Horton when he first got here. He's a shot blocker, rebounder, uh, needs to improve his, his offensive game in the low post, but uh, got a ways to go, to be honest, but we, we like his athletic ability and, and uh, his shot blocking and Hopefully he is rebounding. Dre Clayton, he's 6'6", a junior, red shirt junior. He's also a newcomer from Orlando, Florida, came from northwest Mississippi, Juco. Right. Uh, Dracaela was really highly recruited by the ACC and SEC coming out of high school. 
and chose to go to South Florida where he got hurt uh, his first season. Ended up at Northwest Mississippi Junior College and that's where we recruited him. Dracalo is another guy who who looks like a, a wide body postman and but, but kind of migrates to the three point line and can make a three. So once again, we think that he could create some mismatches for us, but I'd like to see him a little more, uh, with a little more post presence. Yeah, absolutely. Chris Stocks, you've already mentioned him, a 6'2 freshman from Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Yeah, we recruited Chris out of high school and uh, initially he turned us down, went to a prep school in New Hampshire and got hurt early in the season. When that happened, his recruiting fell off and uh, so I remembered him from uh, from his high school days. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we we got back on him and were fortunate enough to get him. And has a great feel for how to play. Just as I mentioned earlier, got to keep him on the practice floor. Sure. This young man, he's going to have to help you this year. I think he can. John Murray, 6'3", senior from Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah, John had a good run in the conference tournament. He, did. he was really productive for us. And, we started him last night. He had 11 points. I thought his shot selection was pretty good last night. So uh, he, he's got some ability. Uh, he, can get, he can get to the rim and, and can make a jump shot. Kenny Jones, 6'6", six, six senior from South Bend, Indiana. He has to come through. Yeah, he does. Uh, Kenny's our high energy guy. Plays with a lot of energy and, and uh, he's, he's emerged as one of the leaders on our team. You know, he's a vocal guy and, and uh, energetic. So He's, uh, he's going to have to get it done for us in the post, even though he, too, is a little undersized and kind of likes to migrate away from the basket. But he's going to have to uh, get in there and mix it up on the, on the block. And the final member of the governor's 2016-17 men's roster, and that's because numerically wears number 45, Zach Galata, six-foot sophomore, O'Fallon, Missouri. Uh, to date, I would say that Zach is probably our most improved player over our first 20-20 uh, Five practices, you know, he's, uh, he's shown confidence in his shot. He shot it well. Uh, he, he's a coach's son who has a good idea how to play and what this game is about. Well, y'all play again Friday night, exhibition game against Swanee. Uh, you just got through playing Thomas Moore. What are you going to try to accomplish with this next outing, Coach? You know, I told our guys that we're playing against the game now. It's not about these the two teams that we're playing. There are, there are rules that, that the NCAA has put forward of who you can play and who you can't in, in these games. So uh, we, we need to play against the game. Just make sure we're getting better and, and preparing for Dayton because that's, uh, that's going to be the first you know, really big challenge that we face in the regular season. Yeah, well, no doubt. When you go to Dayton, you better be ready to play basketball, hang you? I've, I've tried to explain that to our players. What a great atmosphere. Oh, terrific. Uh, they really love basketball and they, they fill that place. So uh, it, it'll be a great challenge. Our guest, Dave Luce. When we come back on the stretch run, we'll look at the schedule for this 2016-17 team with a coach after these words. The model year-end sales event continues at Matthews Nissan, Clarksville's favorite new car dealer. Save big on 400 new. We're making room for 2017s. 8,188 off a new Altima. 6,388 off a new Rogue. 7,888 off a new Maxima. Buy a new Versa. 9,999. You're gonna love our prices. I'm Gary Matthews, and that's my guarantee. You're gonna love our prices, Matthews. For 100 years, Neil Tarpley Parchman Funeral Home has celebrated legacies with services as unique as each life. Neil Tarpley Parchman, people who care, a name you can trust. It's 
Stretch Run with Coach Dave Luce, head men's basketball coach today. Let's look at the schedule that the governors will be playing this season and go over it with the coach. As I said, we we taped this show November 2nd, which is a Wednesday. They beat Thomas Moore last night, 112 to 63. Then Friday night, play Swanee in an exhibition game. And as you mentioned, Coach, it's all to get ready for a heck of a season opener on the road. You play Dayton in Dayton, Ohio. We talked about great atmosphere, great fans, but I promise you the guys will learn something going there and playing. Yeah, Dayton's, a, as you mentioned, a great great atmosphere to play basketball in, and I think they're going to be an excellent team. I'm, I'm actually a, a voting member of the USA Today Top 25 this year. And, hey, and congratulations. Thank, That's thank good. You. And I, I have them as a top 25 team. I think they're going to be really good. I think they can be. Then you come back home and play Oakland City in Clarksville. And then you got the Tarquette Sports Classic. Uh, what's the story on this classic? Coach, I see you got Northern Kentucky, Miami University, and Delaware. Right. It's an exempt event, uh, as the NCAA refers to it. So and I think it's a good exempt event for us because it's uh, three mid-major teams. Yep. All pretty good ball clubs, but you, you know, you feel like uh, you can really be competitive in that, and and I think we can. We're looking forward to that. You play three days in a row. We will play Miami, the host team, on of uh, Saturday afternoon, I believe. Uh -huh. uh, Friday night we. Now this is them. not Miami of Florida. This is Miami of Ohio. Correct. Uh, Friday night we we will play uh, Northern Kentucky, and Sunday afternoon Delaware. Sunday afternoon, Delaware. I like that. Yeah. That's, that, that should be a good learning experience, a good tournament. Correct. Right. I, I think it, you, you have a feel for playing back-to-back -back games like you do in the postseason sure. tournament. That helps. Uh, and I think the teams are much, much like uh, OVC teams. You know, uh, a whole lot better early portion of this schedule, I think, than normal. We've had some really tough ones yep. over the past years. Yep. You know, come home, play Spalding at home. You got Fort Wayne in a home and away. How did that come about? Fort Wayne is favored to win their conference, and it's a good conference. And uh, uh, you know, it, I probably overscheduled a little there. They we played them last year, and and uh, they beat us twice. They beat us in a close game at the Dunn Center and then handle this a little er, uh, easier uh, at their place. So they've got a very good basketball team and uh, just something that we struck up with the other head coach and myself. Right. Well, of course, you play Fort Wayne in Clarksville, then <laughs> let's go to Arkansas, Fayetteville. <laughs> well, you know what that's going to be like. Uh, uh, you know, it's 40, 40 minutes of you know what. Yes, so, sir. Uh, and, and Mike Anderson is back there, you know, and, and doing a great job. Uh Play that return game, Fort Wayne, there. Then Walford in Spartansburg, South Carolina. They've had some good basketball over the years. They have. They have. As a matter of fact, in last year's NCAA tournament a, a year ago, um, the uh, Walford really played Arkansas really tough. Yeah. And took them right to the wire. I think it ended up being a two- or three-point game uh, yeah. in the end. So they'll be tough over there. They will be. No question. Good one here, Evansville and Clarksville. Yeah, we have some local, or not local, some regional rivalry games with with Evansville is, is certainly one of them. Uh, they they uh, they lost some guys off of their team that were some of their biggest contributors, but uh, you know that uh, coming out of the Missouri Valley, they're going to be pretty good. Absolutely, Lipscomb comes to Clarksville. Right, uh, it's another good regional rivalry that I think has uh, got, got some fan interest, you know. Mm -hmm. It's good to play, and, and we're going to hopefully be able to continue that. And then, oh, how the schedule gets tough, too. I mean, and if it's not tough enough already. You didn't get enough of Indiana. You thought you'd go back. <laughs> well, you know, uh, from a financial standpoint, we have to do uh, three of those. So uh, Dayton, Indiana, and and uh, one, one Arkansas. Other one Arkansas make up that that threesome. Yeah, that, uh, I guess helps pay the bills. Whew! Well, that, they grow up quick in those games. Exactly. You find out what basketball is all about, really, when you go to Dayton, Arkansas. Find out Indiana. who wants it and who doesn't. That's, also, that's for sure. Western Kentucky and Bowling Green. That's a terrific 
terrific matchup there for the fans and everyone else. Yeah, I think a great deal of fan interest uh, in, in that game. For, sure. You know, Rick Stansberry, former uh, uh, Austin P. assistant, now the head coach at Western Kentucky. So we thought that uh, would be an attractive game to add. I agree. And then you play the OVC schedule. Early schedule, though, non-conference schedule, you know, we always talk about, you and I, we always do it anyway. You got your pre-conference schedule a third, your conference schedule a third, and your postseason a third. What do you think about this first third of the year? Well, we certainly uh, come out of the gate with a big bang playing Belmont, and that'll, that'll be on New Year's Eve. It'll be an afternoon game at 2.30, I think, is the time. It is. Um, so I like that. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, I like day basketball. I don't. I do. Yeah, I. I uh, you know, if everybody would agree to that, I'd. I'd be fine with it. Uh, problem is, you know, you, you play your home games in the afternoon, and then you go uh, somewhere four hours away, and you play at eight thirty or something yeah. like that. So it's. Uh, but if everybody agreed to it, I, I would agree with you that uh, the afternoons are probably the best time. Of course. You do get Belmont this year, but you get them at home. Last year you had to play them there. Right. Nice to get them at home. Absolutely. So I, I like those years where, uh, you know, you have uh, the the other division. Uh, you know, you alternate home and away and from a year to year basis. So this year we're we're uh, we've got Belmont at home to start the season. And uh, Tennessee Tech, Jacksonville State, SIUE, and Eastern Illinois. You got a four-game road trip there after Belmont at home. Yeah, they tell me that that's a good thing because next year it'll flip-flop. But I'm a little more worried about this year. This year now. So yeah. uh, we do have a string of four in a row on the road. And then you get four in a row at home: Moorhead State, Murray State, UT Martin, and SEMA. They all sound good to me. I'll tell you, people have made a commitment to their basketball programs in this league, and they've done it mostly in the form of hiring quality coaches and and improving facilities and all of the teams in our league have done that tennessee state you get them at home and i'm gonna tell you they're an improved team yeah, they're a good basketball team i think when you talk about the east uh you know at least on paper belmont's going to be very good yeah. uh, tsu is going to be very good and i think moorhead's going to be outstanding yeah so you like the league's balance a little bit better than normal. I, I do, I do, and I think it's due to the commitment that people have made to basketball in the league. Well, look forward to the season, thanks, Coach. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate Always. the invite. Sure, glad to have you and glad you're feeling good. That's Thank the main you. thing Thank also. You. Tell the family hello. I will. Head Coach Dave Luce has been our guest today. Tell your friends, neighbors, and loved ones about the show. A little of the same, but always different. And anyone I know me to talk with is a potential guest. Until next time, have a nice rest of the day, folks.